Hey, good morning, everybody. This is George from DinosaurGeorge.com, answering the questions I get from every corner of planet Earth. Uh, if you've got a question you'd like to ask me, go to DinosaurGeorge.com, go to the Ask Dinosaur George page, click on the form, fill it out and send it to me. I'll do my best to answer it. Um, we go through so many of these, though, um, it's, it's sometimes hard to get to everybody. So I apologize if you've written and you've not heard back from me. Okay, let's get started. Wyatt from New York City, New York. How do you know what size dinosaur brains were? Wyatt, that's a great question. Um, it is because of the work of people like Dr. Uh, or Professor Larry Whitmer, uh, who is at uh, Ohio University. They actually take the brain case, that is the place where the brain used to be in the dinosaur, and they run it through a machine called a CAT scan. And the CT scanner can look through the rock into the space where the brain used to be. And it kind of sort of creates a three-dimensional image of that space and that then tells the paleontologist what the brain looked like. So we're able to determine its size and even to the to the degree that they can determine what part of the brain was used for what uh, sense. Like for instance, its sense of balance, its sense of smell, its vision. It gives us tremendous information and truly gives us new insight into dinosaurs. All right, Nicholas from Alameda, California. I have been reading about Giganotosaurus and Spinosaurus and I heard that Giganotosaurus was bigger in one book and Spinosaurus was bigger in the other. So I was wondering who is bigger and who would win. Okay, one of the reasons for the confusion a lot of times, Nicholas, is um, we don't always know the true length of a dinosaur. Sometimes we have to estimate their size because pieces and parts are missing. Uh, let's say, for instance, when the dinosaur died, some predator came up and ripped off its tail and walked off with it. Well, that would leave us with the body, but not the tail, and so we would have to estimate how long that tail was. Sometimes we're right, sometimes we're wrong. Well, different, uh, different books will tell you different things because they've gotten information from different sources. Some people believe Spinosaurus was longer, some believe Giganotosaurus was longer. But until complete skeletons of these dinosaurs are found, we don't truly know how large they are. And more importantly, even if we found a complete skeleton, that doesn't necessarily mean we found the biggest uh, of its family. Uh, he says, P.S. I love your videos you do on YouTube. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Um, uh, he says, uh, because I gave up my love for dinosaurs, but you brought that back to life for me. So now I'm hoping to be able to pursue paleontology as a career. You know, Nicholas, that's very kind of you, and I'm glad I, I motivated you to become more interested in paleontology. I know that for a lot of people, paleontology or dinosaurs are really interesting for a while, and then they may move on to other things. My hope, as I travel across the country teaching about dinosaurs, is that I can motivate more people to join the science. The more people we have, the better it will be for science because it gives us much greater uh, points of view. Uh, when, you, we're in, when you're in a small science, people have a tendency sometimes to act sort of like sheep, sheeple, <laughs> and they have a tendency to follow the lead of somebody else. And instead of voicing their own ideas, uh, sometimes we get into this habit of just mimicking what somebody else has said, and that's not good for the science. We need a lot of differing point of view, so we'd love to have you with us. All right, uh, Aaron from Topeka, Kansas. Do you prefer Deinonychus or Utah Raptor? Aaron, I gotta tell you, I'm very partial to Deinonychus. That is my second favorite dinosaur. Utah Raptor is my third favorite. The only reason why I like Deinonychus so much is because it truly changed the way that we look at dinosaurs. Deinonychus gave us insight into this notion that dinosaurs and birds, at least predatory dinosaurs and birds, were very closely related. All right, Corey from Jackson, Missouri. Hey, DG, what is your opinion on cryptid, uh, crypt, cryptid dinosaurs like Mokomembe? Thank you for your time. You know, Corey, um, it's, it's difficult to know whether there are living dinosaurs, as we think of dinosaurs, uh, cruising around out there. It's not impossible, don't get me wrong. I, I, don't want to, um, I don't want to say that I'm such a genius that I can tell you without any doubt what is and is not possible. That drives me nuts when you hear people, especially in paleontology, when they make these definitive statements as if they are the only source of knowledge on the planet, and then they kind of dismiss what you have to say. Let me say this, uh, I would think it would be very, very unlikely that, that, moder that dinosaurs, the gigantic dinosaurs, were still on this planet, even as far back as, as eight, nine hundred years ago. The reason why I say that is because in order for that dinosaur to exist, it had to have parents. 
and there had to be other members of the family at some point in time, which means rather than just one lone dinosaur cruising around, we should have seen a large number of them, meaning that it wouldn't be as easy for them to hide. Uh, now, ultimately, there could be the last dinosaur. And it's certainly possible that that the dinosaur in Africa that they refer to as Mokola may have been uh, may have been the last dinosaur. But I I think it's very it's very unlikely. Let me just say that. Okay, finally, Orville from Wahiawa, Hawaii. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Orville, if I mispronounce that, call me. I'll get on a flight and go out to Hawaii and spend a couple of months uh, checking out how to pronounce the name. Actually, I just want a vacation and I'm looking for a reason to go out there. I have a very good friend out there, um, uh, Trisha, who is out in Hawaii. So maybe I'll come see my friend Trisha and uh, I'll come find out how to pronounce your, your community's name. <laughs> what time period did Megalodon live in? I think Megalodon was from the Miocene period. I believe that's when Meg was there. Um, there's a variety of those gigantically huge sharks, Megalodon being the ultimate big one. But uh, I think Meg showed up in the Miocene period. I think maybe the late Eocene. I don't know. Uh, I'm certain it was, it was in the Miocene. All right, you guys, if you have a question, go to my website. While you're there, sign up to follow me on Facebook and on Twitter. I send out really kind of cool tidbits on Twitter. I don't send out things like, I woke up this morning and brushed my teeth because I know you're not interested in the fact that I woke up this morning and brushed my teeth. Um, and I do the same on Facebook. I, I publish some cool stuff. So join those two, and um, uh, while you're there, check out the site. There's some neat stuff. Until next time, you guys, for you young folks out there, make sure to practice your reading. I want you to be good readers. And for everybody else out there, always use good manners and treat everybody the way you would like to be treated. Until next time, this is Dinosaur George, and I am out of here.